Hi, and thank you for joining me for another video. And friends, today I want to speak to you about women rabbis and why they cannot properly fill the historic position of a rabbi, both socially and or halakhically. Now, I understand that we're not dealing with mumchim of the Mishnek era, but a ceremonial title that was created around the 15th century. In other words, we can all agree that this is not real smicha. For there is no one today, neither male or female, that possesses authentic smicha. Again, this we can all agree upon. Now, I know that many on this basis alone take a very tolerant approach to the whole issue. And in my opinion, they're dead wrong for doing so. Why? Because it's rabbis today, although not having the Torah authority to affect Jewish law, that are the backbone of religious Torah life. Like it or not. In other words, it is their advice and their leadership that will honestly determine the ethical impact that Judaism will have on the world. Anyways, I won't bore you with speaking about rabbinic sources because for some reason, unfortunately, everyone in this era just ignores them anyway. So I'll place them on the side of the video as a reference for all to see. Now, I understand that because of modern day Judaism's shift to the left, I will be made to look chauvinistic or archaic because of my views and statements. But you know what? That's fine. And it surely wouldn't be the first time. But friends, I must tell you that first and foremost, that we as religious Jews must acknowledge that the question on whether a woman can become a rabbi or not should not be one left up to halakha to decide only. In other words, since when did halakha set morality among Kal Yisrael? Jewish law, of course, but not morality. No, friends, morality is to halakha what wisdom is to knowledge. And that's the objective of it all. Which is why it seems a bit moronic when I hear Orthodox rabbis say that according to Jewish law, a woman can become a rabbi. When what they're really trying to say is that although Jewish law and our sages never endorse such an idea, that the text itself does not either mention it nor explicitly prohibit it. Which would then lead a modern amoral mind to say that not only should it be allowed, but also encouraged. Which is what is happening with, I would say, the vast majority of modern Orthodox rabbis today, who have fallen into the trap of not caring for what works, but rather what makes people feel good. Why? Because everyone knows that it is Jewish feminists, both male and female, who make up the boards, thus call the shots in the majority of Orthodox synagogues today. Which is one reason for the huge growth among ultra-Orthodox movements like Chabad and the like, which have no boards and where the rabbis laid down the law. But anyways, that's another video in itself. However, friends, this new form of modern orthodoxy really should be redefined for what it is, and that's an attempt to demasculinize Judaism on the feminist notion that men and women, apart from being equal, are also the same and interchangeable in virtually every paradigm of life. Because remember, this is not an attempt for ladies to hold leadership positions in their synagogues or their religious communities, because this already occurs. No, my friends, this is an attempt to pass feminize and demasculate the heads of the religious world whom they disagree with. A move that will not only replace standards with compassion within Judaism but will ultimately counteract one of the Torah's main objectives and that's the desexualization of religion. And friends, those of us who have come to Judaism with a desire to better the world know that this Femi Ortho movement did not begin with Sarah Horowitz or Rabbi Avi Weiss but rather with Zionism and the modern Orthodox acceptance of secular Judaism. Why Zionism? Because, my friends, no other movement has defeminized Jewish women more than the Zionist movement, which at its foundation taught the Bolshevik ideal that equality trumps all. This is why Israel was one of the first and only countries even today to place women on the front lines, even offering them two free taxpayer paid abortions yearly so that apart from just fighting like men they could also acquire their sexual appetite and what do i mean by the acceptance of secular judaism by the modern orthodox world friends I mean the acceptance and acknowledgement of non-religious Jews and their organizations into the family of Israel based on the erroneous notion that there are no enemies from within. Friends, when Jewish law is clear that in all matters of life we are to relate to them as non-Jews. Actually, I would say that 
This reversal of Jewish law and tradition, apart from contributing to the notion of female rabbis, is even a more problematic issue. Why? Because history has taught us that it has always been the secular Jewish world that has influenced the religious world more than the other way around. Defeminizing our women, while at the same time feminizing our men. And friends, another area not mentioned by virtually anyone regarding this issue is how does this affect procreation? Because clearly, being active in the rabbinate encourages women to forsake the most important occupation that only they can engage in. A position that no one else can fill. And that's giving birth and properly raising children. A problem that is clearly evident among Jewish women of today on how, due to their masculinization, they have lost the ability to properly mother their children. How? By disregarding any male intervention or advice on the issue, which is displayed through uncontrollable smothering and even the psychological marrying of their children. And friends, don't be fooled. The masculinization of women does not make them into men, but rather into uncontrollable controllable, nonsensical women. Actually, in the reform arena, since Hebrew Union College began ordaining women, today you have more women than men studying to become rabbis in the reform movement. Which is why I believe that in at least 30 years you will have more women outnumbering men learning for smicha in modern day yeshivot worldwide if we don't do something to stop this today. In other words, you will have men leaving religion. Also, friends, it's no secret that the majority of the world's problems, as well as the majority of the world's achievements in the macro arena, come through males. So how would placing a female in a macro position work in influencing those males? It wouldn't. Anyways, for more information about Torah Judaism, please visit TorahJudaism.org. Thank you.